Hi, I'm John Narcessian, Head of Advisor Education at PIMCO. Today we're going to be talking about a specific tactical opportunity around tax loss harvesting. Recent market volatility suggests that there may be an opportunity to bring this valuable guidance to your clients to produce intended tax advantage. Let's start with a quick refresher on this capital gain and loss harvesting methodology to take advantage of those opportunities when they exist in the marketplace. Of course, we start first with short-term gains against short-term losses. We net those two together to come up with a net short-term position. We then move the methodology over to the long-term position, those assets held in excess of 12 months, and we net out gains against losses there as well. Finally, we pull the two together, and we net out our net short-term position against our net long-term position, utilizing that net number in a variety of different ways. If we have a gain at the end of the day, that gain's going to be taxed based on the relative holding period. If, however, that netting methodology produces a loss, our clients, of course, can use losses dollar for dollar against realized gains. Anything above and beyond can be used up to $3,000 a year against ordinary income. Anything above that amount gets carried forward indefinitely. Let's quickly review our tax rates for 2022 as they've adjusted for inflation factors. We know that we have a minimal rate of 10% for families filing jointly up to $20,000. The maximum federal income tax rate is 37% today, and that affects families at approximately $650,000. We do want to remind everybody, of course, about the more favorable long-term capital gain rate structure that exists in the federal code today. We have a 0% rate up to 83,000, a 15% rate up to 517, and then the maximum long-term capital gain rate remains very favorable at 20% for income above 517,000. Now, of course, we do need to factor in the two Obamacare taxes, 0.9% against earned income, 3.8% against passive forms of income, including investment-related activity. Both of these affect families at $250,000 and above. Let's now have a conversation around an illustration to demonstrate the benefits of tax loss harvesting in a hypothetical client scenario. Here are our assumptions. Our family files jointly with an annual income of $800,000. This family has received short-term capital gain distributions during the year of $20,000. They also realized a long-term capital gain in their portfolio for $25,000. And this family holds a position today that was originally purchased at $650,000, but current market price suggests $600,000, or an unrealized loss of $50,000. A potential tax loss scenario might be the investor sells the original position for $600,000, reinvests those proceeds into a similar security, but not identical, maintaining their exposure in the intended asset class, but booking a $50,000 loss for tax benefits. What are the resulting implications? Let's go through them. Number one, the client offsets their $20,000 short-term capital gain, which produces a tax benefit of $8,000. They also offset their $25,000 realized long-term capital gain, saving another $6,000. They used $3,000 against ordinary income, producing an incremental benefit of just over $1,000, and the client retains a loss carry forward of $2,000 to use in future years. Now, while the immediate tax benefits of a tax loss harvesting scenario might be obvious, there are some additional benefits that may be less obvious. Those include the opportunity to reduce bracket creep where a gain might force our client to, into a higher marginal bracket. Clients who might be subject to the AMT, that exemption amount, of course, is subject to a phase-out for higher-income individuals. How about closely held business owners who might take advantage of the QBI or 199A deduction, which, of course, is available based on their AGI limits? And then, finally, social benefits, including the taxation of Social Security and the Medicare premiums paid are all determined based on our client's adjusted gross income. Tax loss harvesting provides the benefit of an immediate tax reduction, but ancillary benefits in lowering our client's adjusted gross income. Now, in this process of realizing losses for tax benefits, we have to be aware of or conscious of the wash loss sale rule. 
You know how it works. It's that 61-day window, 30 days before the trade date, 30 days after, that prohibits us from buying or selling that security in that window in order to utilize the realized loss for tax advantages. Now, there are a number of ways around the tax loss uh, rule and the opportunity to use these losses for the intended tax benefit. Most obviously, our client can sell that position at a loss and wait the required 31 days before reestablishing the position. The client might sell one security and buy something similar but not identical. I sell one automobile stock, I buy a similar automobile stock. I liquidate an investment in municipal bond fund, and I buy a similar but not identical municipal bond fund in order to maintain my exposure but to realize the loss. Let's now turn our attention to how we communicate this value to our clients. I think it's so important for us to be proactive, particularly during this period of market volatility, to bring valuable ideas to our clients that help improve their financial outcomes. Harvesting losses in this current market environment can obviously produce tax benefits by offsetting capital gains and lowering their AGI. It can be executed as part of a portfolio rebalancing methodology to align our client's portfolio exposures to their intended policy. It can help clients overcome this concept of loss aversion, that status of inactivity, where clients are reluctant to make effective or useful changes in their portfolio strategies. But maybe there's an additional benefit from the advisor's perspective as well. It demonstrates empathy. It demonstrates forward thinking. It demonstrates our ability to go beyond just stay the course and to bring valuable, actionable ideas to our clients that provide associated benefits. I hope this conversation around tax loss harvesting has been beneficial. If you'd like to learn more about that or any of the other concepts that we've discussed today, please feel free to visit our website or, of course, to contact your local PIMCO account manager.